So the question is, how did it happen that the youth of today's generation went down by hundreds of percent to the, to the negative derogatory side? What's going on here? What is getting done so bad that we are unable to stabilize the situation? It's only get worse. We try, we learn, we read, we pray. In reality, it's only getting worse and worse. So there are a few reasons for it. Reason number one, it's the yeshivot themselves. The yeshivot, they teach for already many, many tens of years, they teach the same way they used to teach. Used to teach 50 years ago, they teach today the same thing. They teach in Europe 50 years ago, you come to yeshiva, they teach you chumash, they teach you halachot, mishnayot, then they teach you gmara and musar, same thing, nothing changed. Every rabbi teaches new student, the new student is like a rabbi, nothing is changing. The yeshivot teach the same way. Problem is, the world is different. 50 years ago, but actually 100 years ago, someone came to the Chafetz Chaim and he asked him why, maybe it was 80 years ago, why Hashem made such a thing television? It started to come with the new things, radars, all kinds of inventions to the world. Recording on big, te on big, uh, on big, uh, you know, tubes. So they, so they asked the Chafetz Chaim, why Hashem, after all these years, now He gives us this technology? So the Chafetz Chaim said, until now, if you told the Jew, when you die, you stand in front of Hashem, and you have a trial, and one year trial, and you pay for every sin you ever made, and it's everyone knew it, no one questioned it. That's it. That's the way the Torah say, finished. Today, people ask, how do I know there's Olam Abba? How do I know when I die there is really something? Oh, the Torah say, but how do I know? Give me a proof. So the Chafetz Chaim says, since people are so weak in their faith, Hashem gives aid to help them, to show them that it's realistic. Why? If a person can invent a, recorder, a recording device that records everything and take, can take you back in time and play to you all the sins you made, you have a doubt that Hashem has a recording device, that He knows every beep you ever made in your life? So the people started to see, oh, it's realistic, so it helps us. Today, the yeshivot, in the yeshiva, when you send the kids to yeshiva ketana, they already assume that every kid who comes from a religious home, the mother covers the hair, the father has a big yarmulke and a hat and a beard, and they keep Shabbos and kosher, and you know, everything is fine. Look, they don't have television, whatever. Everything is fine. It's a religious family. They already assume that the kids have emuna in Hashem. That the, every kid comes here, no one questions God, no one questions who is God, no one questions how do I know the Torah is really from Hashem, maybe the rabbi made it up. How do I know the Torah doesn't have mistake? How do I know the halachot that they teach me, it's not extra? Maybe it's not what Hashem wants me to do. How do I know our religion is the only true religion? The kids have lots of, lots of questions. In my opinion, the more questions the person has in Emunah, it shows that he's smarter than the other kids. The more questions he has, it shows that this is a clever boy that can be Gadol be Israel. That means his mind is creative, he's investigating, he's not letting anyone fool him. You have to give him his answers. If you give him his answers, everything will settle in his head, you're going to get a new Gadol, a huge giant Chacham. You ignore his questions, he's going to eat, he's going to stay one year, five years, ten years, one day he'll be independent, He'll go, and that's it. you never hear from him anymore. He becomes secular. Why? Ten years in yeshiva, not one time someone gave him an answer. Every time he asks something that it's a little bit about faith, oh, Mr. X, come to the yeshiva. Your son is an apicorus. He's already asking, how do we know Moshe Rabbeinu got the Ten Commandments? What is going on here? We cannot tolerate this in our class. This is a very good yeshiva, it's, we are 50 years here, we don't allow things like this over here. If you're lucky, you get a warning or two. After that, find him a different yeshiva, and that's how it starts. He goes from one yeshiva to the other, five years later he becomes a murderer. 
Why is it? <laughs> yes, it's not an exaggeration. Believe me, he becomes a drug addict and then a drug dealer and then he gets arrested and he drives without a license and then the police knock on your door two o'clock at night to look for him and then you say, how can it be? Three years ago this kid knew, he learned one page of Gemara, five minutes later he came and he told you everything by heart because he asked, how do I know that that's really happened and no one gave him answers? That's what happened. The point I'm making is like this. The yeshivot have to already understand that the world is different. The world has electronic information is transferred from one person to the other in seconds. Even kids who are the cleanest kids, they don't have internet, they don't have access to the dirt in this world. Some way or the other it will attack them in one point of their life. When they sit on a plane and there's some chiloni sitting next to them for 10 hours, the Satan will already arrange that a person who hates Hashem and hates the Torah or is also an ex fum person who wants to take another person to destroy him with himself to feel better, he will already attack your son when he's 15 and 16 and put all kinds of things in his mind and a year or two later when he has a crisis in his learning the next thing he becomes also secular. Why? It happens all the time. Plus, plus, kids are curious. They want to know what's going on in the world. They go to places, they stand in places to look. If a guest comes to the house and he goes to his room and he has an iPhone, five minutes when he's not there, they go and they play with that. They want to know what's going on. You have to prepare the children, the yeshivot, and the parents to give them the answers to these fundamental, important questions. If you ignore it, if you're lucky, it won't make a damage. But most of the time, eventually, it will become a problem. So what do I say? I cannot change the world of the yeshivot. Who am I? No one would listen anyway. If it was, pa if it was possible, I would do everything I can that every yeshiva will teach at least one class a day, emuna. But not emuna like you think, oh, read the ilim and trust that Hashem is listening to our prayers. That's a separate kind of emuna. We're talking what I call emuna, it's really what Hashem calls yediyah. Ve'yadata ayom, you should know that I'm your God. Nowhere in the Torah Hashem wants us to believe in Him. Only to know, everything is knowledge. Ve'yadatem, you should know I'm your God. You should know I'm watching you. You should know there's an eye who watch over you and there's a ear who listens to you and everything you do is registered in the book of God. You should know I'm the God that took you out of Egypt. What do you mean I should know? I live 3,000 years later. How do I know? I believe what people told me. No, 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 my friend. I gave you all the tools in my Torah to know, not to believe. Believing means not knowing. If you educate the kids, psh, nobody, thousand chilonim would stand. Thousand kofrim will fight them. They will knock all of them in a minute. Why? They have the knowledge. Why? You cannot win against Hashem's knowledge. All you have to do is to know the knowledge. You can know Gemara very well, and then somebody comes and begins to talk to you. How oh, do you know there was a flood? There's no proof there was a flood. I can prove to you there's no flood. He's starting to get confused. And plus, there's another problem. You know, many of these kofrim, unfortunately, they're liars and they do manipulations. They take 60, 70 percent of truth, add on top of it 20, 30 percent of lies. It's enough. You add one percent of lies, you change the whole thing. I give you an example. In my in my film Torah and Science. I showed that the Torah say everything that has fins have scales. You will never find something in the ocean, Hashem say, that have scales and did not have fins in the same body. Never! Which means 72% of the world is water. 12 kilometer depth, which is 8 mile depth. Billions of things moving in the ocean. 3,300 years later, since the Torah was written until today, Nobody in the history ever found something that have f uh, scales and did not have fins. Which means if someone will find a snake that you scratch and scales like in a fish, they fall off, this kind of scales that you have a kosher fish and you scrape it and the scales are falling off, looks like little dimes. If a snake would be found and you scrape the skin of it and scales will fall off it, Judaism is over. That's it. No more Yom Kippur, no more Shabbat, no more Chametz, no more nothing. It's all over. Why? 
If you have one mistake in the Torah, it shows that the creator of the world did not write it, because the creator of the world is not capable of making mistake, human error. If you find a mistake in the Torah, a promise that the Torah made, and it was wrong, that's it. Everything else becomes questionable. So what this crook that is doing, and believe me, has a lot of people that he hunt because they're ignorant, they don't use their brain, and he fools them and they don't pay attention. He, take, he took on YouTube a little film, and he said, this is a reason to laugh at religious people. He, he showed a part from my film that I said that everything that has scales must have fins. And he shows some kind of a leopard that walks like this on, a, on, a, on, a, on, on, on the land. Nothing to do with what the Torah said. Only things who live in the water. So you see something from the land. So you see? It has the scales, but it doesn't have the fins. You see what he's talking about? He's lying. Hundreds of people wrote to me. I said to them, well, don't you see that he's, I'm talking, uh, the Torah speaking about water and he's showing you something from the land. There's nothing to the one with the other. <laughs> Comparing apple to pears. Oh, you're right. But what about the ones who did not call? They don't know. In one minute, they already cre he created a doubt. So now when they come to keep Shabbat, they have a doubt. Maybe it's also a mistake. Maybe Tefillin is a mistake. Maybe Brit Mila is a mistake. Maybe this is a mistake. This is how in one minute you can knock down the, the emunah of every kid. You know, I have a friend. He's in Toronto. He's a rabbi, Rabbi Saperman. That's his name. He's an expert in proving the Torah is mina shamayim. All kinds of expertise he has. So he told me once, he told me that he went to some yeshivot, the best yeshivot, orthodox, very strong yeshivot, all day, the highest level. And he asked the kids in front of the Rebbe, everyone believes in Hashem here? Everyone say yes. Everyone believes the Torah is in Hashem? Yes. Everyone believes the Gemara, the Mishnah, the Torah Shebaal Pei is also from Hashem? He already see, they say yes, but he already see doubts the way they move. So then he said to the rabbi, Rabbi, please now excuse us for a few minutes. I want to speak to the kids in public. As soon as he leaves the class, 50% of the kids have no emunah in Hashem. In Hashem! Not to talk about the Torah. Because it's normal. It's very normal. People are not stupid. They want proofs. What are you, are you telling me? You're telling me, okay, tradition. Give me a proof. We have a solid gold truth that everything can be challenged, right the way you get the answer. And you see in the Torah, in other religions, you have to believe. The Torah say, no, don't believe. Ask. The whole Talmud, questions and answer. Question, answer. Question, answer. Christianity, not one question is allowed. Islam, not one question is allowed. No one is allowed to ask questions. If you begin with the questions, they'll drown us. No one is allowed to question. Torah. Look at the Talmud. If you ever learn Gemara, you know what I'm talking about. Everything, questions and answers. What was before Hashem? What will be after? What, how do you know why righteous people suffer? Every question. How, if Hashem knows the future, how can we choose what to do? How can the, this mitzvah is such a severe punishment and this mitzvah is an easy punishment? It's everything. Abraham, you say that Abraham did this, so how come this? Everything that looks like a contradiction, like a question, like a doubt, the Gemara right away attacks. Why? The truth should never be afraid of anyone. You have the truth, what are you afraid of? You always win the argument. When you have a fake product, you have to be afraid of questioning, of course. You're a crook. You don't want to get caught. If you have the original, what do you worry about? Adraba, the opposite. You want them to come and ask questions to prove how great we are. That's it, very simple.